welcome to the Cassandra Show, your ultimate destination for laughter, inspiration, and everything in between. I hope you've got your comfy seats ready because today's episode is all about hitting pause, embracing self-love, and finding that authentic happiness that lights up your soul. So go ahead, put that remote down. Yes, I'm talking to you. It's time to give yourself permission to unwind, relax, and soak in all the goodness we have in store for you. Today, y'all, we're diving deep into the beautiful journey of self-discovery, exploring what it truly means to love yourself unapologetically. And guess what? As the clock ticks closer to five o'clock somewhere, we're switching gears to bring you the juiciest, the spiciest, and the most entertainment segment yet. That's right, it's time to grab your bait, your favorite beverage, because we're sipping and spilling with our girl, Koya. So like I said, get all comfy, grab that bubbly beverage, and let's get this show loving the energy in this room today. Yes, listen, our guest today is not just a self-love coach. She's a beacon of joy and a passionate advocate for women's empowerment. Y'all, please welcome to the lavender couch, the one and only Miss Renee Simpson! Yes! Go, 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 go! Go, Renee! Go, Renee! Renee, you look fabulous. Thank you, you look so fabulous. You're welcome. Thank Thanks you again for too. joining me. Thank you. We got on the spring colors, don't we? Ready for the spring. We are ready. We are ready. So listen, would you please tell us what's your personal story that prompted you to become a self-love and happiness coach? I got married a little late in life in my 30s. Okay. And everything was going great when I had my first daughter. Mm-hmm. But a few years later, I had a lot of complications in the delivery room with mm. the second daughter. She passed away four months oh, later. Oh, no. I'm so sorry. Thank you. I'm so sorry. After that, I found that her birthday and the day of her passing were impossible days to get through. Mm. Like it could be a week or so before, mm -hmm. and I would just go into a depression. Mm. So I noticed, though, after about the third year, I started getting invitations to events mm -hmm. on those days. Oh, wow. Like out of the blue. Mm -hmm. And one, it, the, the first one, it was almost like it was her birthday party. I got invited to this event for bloggers. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't even been blogging that long. I don't know how they found me. Mm -hmm. But I show up for this event, and it's, there's this dinner, and there are balloons. And I was like, oh, my God, wow. this is like her birthday party. Wow. So after that, it started to happen again, different events. And I realized she didn't want me to be unhappy on those days. Oh, I love that. She didn't. So I started to, I said, what can I do to make sure that on those days I'm very happy? Mm -hmm. And I decided I wanted to do a wellness retreat in me memory of her on uh -huh. those two days. And so I started doing Well Diva Weekend. Well Diva, I love it. Well Diva Weekend. The first one, this is really something. The way it happened was I was at um, uh, a race. I used to do half marathons. Okay. And I started talking to some ladies in line. And I said, oh, I'm going to do this retreat in memory of my daughter, and I'm trying to think where to do it. It's either going to be in Temecula, which is wine country mm -hmm. in California, in, mm -hmm. in Southern California, or it's going to be in Sedona, which had been recommended, but mm -hmm. I had never been. The two ladies both said, Sedona, hands down, it has to wow. be Sedona. So beautiful. So I'm like, okay, why Sedona? And one of the ladies said, because it's so serene. Mm. Guess what? My daughter's name was Serene. Are you serious? I'm serious. There is no way these wow. right, they make right, these bumps. right. Yes. There is no way these ladies could have known that. No. So that's wow. where Well Diva Weekend was born wow. in Sedona, Arizona. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. So when you talk about finally living for yourself, what are some common challenges or barriers that women often face in making this shift towards prioritizing their own needs and desires? 
Finally living for yourself, fly. Mm. A lot of times we want to put our family's needs before ourselves. Mm. And it can be a struggle. Yes. Just setting boundaries for yourself can be a struggle. Yes. I think back to when I had my first daughter and I'd have to just close the door just to go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just that simple boundary. A lot yes. of mothers won't even do that. So just setting your own boundaries That's and then so enforcing true. them. Yes, yes. That can be difficult. It's very difficult. It's very difficult. Mm. So can you tell us more about the group travels and vacations you organize through Well Diva Lifestyle and Travel? Yes. So I started going all over the world because I grew up traveling. My dad got a job in Saudi Arabia when I was in the seventh grade. We moved over there. And from that point, I just began to love all cultures and love travel. And I wanted other people to embrace travel, too. Oh, it's the best. Yes. yes. So I started inviting people to go with me to Dubai. This was back in like 2017, 2018. And back Before then. Before everybody started right, going to right, Dubai. Right, right. Okay. Yes. I invited 40 people. Good Lord of mercy. Guess how many showed up? How many? Zero. No, stop it! So you ended up going by yourself? <laughs> so I planned to go by myself. At the last minute, I did connect with a couple other ladies uh -huh. who ended up going with me. That's good. And But the thing was, oh, I don't want to get beheaded. Or, oh, I don't want to spend that kind of money. Or, oh, I don't have that kind of time off. So I started the Well Diva Lifestyle Travel mm -hmm. component to connect with other ladies who had a similar situation. You mm -hmm. want to go and do something wonderful for your birthday, but your crew... They don't want to do all of that. <laughs> Your crew got issues. Right. Yes, yes. So we've created a sisterhood, and the ladies have connected, and we've been to Cuba, to Greece, and we've Look at this! I love it! In Maui. We did Maui, and we've done uh, Italy, Egypt. Amazing. We've been all over the place. Amazing. Since 2017? Since 2017. That's incredible. So when do you go on a trip? Like every year or two we, times a year? We go about five times a year. Five times a year? Yes. So since 2017, you know that seven, what's that, seven years, y'all? Eight years, yeah, seven no, years. Yeah. So you've been on 35 almost. <laughs> Just about, just you about. You living your best life. Y'all are living your best life. We are. We are. and well, there's like 300 or so ladies who have traveled, so it's different ladies really? on each trip. So you've grown yes. the sisterhood as well. Yes. That's so beautiful. Yes. That's beautiful. So would you please share your insights on the therapeutic benefits mm -hmm. of traveling? Yes, mm. for one, travel helps to connect you with other cultures. Yes. You'd be amazed at the things that we assume are different mm -hmm. when really it's the language is the only difference like one of We're the ladies human yes right exactly. one of the ladies shared and the food the food is different the food is different yes. but go with an open mind yes you know yes. don't go looking for Popeyes no please because people do they do and it's there you yeah find because it. you can find a McDonald's in Japan yes. I mean, it's, yes. Like, yes. it's amazing but be willing to connect with the people through their food, through their yes. culture. Yes. Um, it's also therapeutic to see the different types of ways that the women care for themselves. Yes. In Dubai, we have nine hour spa days. Nine hours? Yes. Please tell me what can we do in nine hours, y'all? What surprised me, I think I took 26 ladies to Dubai, and what surprised me was nobody declined the nine-hour spa day. <laughs> I, I thought bet. somebody would say that's too much. But in a nine-hour spa day, you have access to the entire spa. Uh -huh. You can do the hot room, the cold room. Mm. You can do a massage. You can take a break and go out to the beach. Oh, I love it. And they serve you lunch? You can come back in and have the buffet lunch. Stop it. I love it. And you have the relaxation room. Yes. You have different types of light therapy. Mm -hmm. And it only ends at nine hours because it's time to go home. That's amazing. So how many days did you all do spa treatments? We usually do one full one day. One day? Okay. One That's full wonderful. day. You go to Morocco, you get a whole different experience. They do the, the hammam bath where they scrub you down from oh. head to toe and you just kind of lay back like a baby. That sounds amazing. <laughs> Yes. So, yeah, just different types of treatments that yes. women do. Really oh, and nice. And you come home with all those amazing memories. Not just memories, mm. but you can bring a lot of the experience home. One mm. of my favorite ways to bring the experience home is through fragrance. 
I love it. So like in the Middle East, it's oud. Mm. And in Morocco, it's orange flower. Really? So you get connected with the different scents. Bring them home in a fragrance, in a tea, oh. a perfume, a tea, or a home fragrance, a candle. The nostalgia And relive amazing. it. Yes. That's yeah. beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you for saying that. Yes. So if you could give one playful piece of advice to women who are struggling to put themselves first, what would it be? Playful? I would say... When we were children, we did a lot of imagination, right? Yes. We did a lot of make-believe. Mm -hmm. And now we are adults, we call it visualizing. Ah. Right? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. You can just pretend that whatever it is, your goal for self-care, if your self-care goal is a trip, mm -hmm. right? Go into that place in your mind mm -hmm. and, and visualize mm -hmm. that. Because the more time you spend visualizing, the more ideas you'll get for ways to make it your reality. Ooh, I love it. So visualization is very powerful. It is. I love that. So listen, we are going to take a short break. Y'all, I am here with the one and only Miss Renee Simpson. We're going to take a short break. She's going to be here, I believe, when you come back. So don't go nowhere. Put the remote down. We'll see you shortly. Thank you. Hello and welcome back to the Sassandra Show. I don't know what time it is where you are, but baby, it is five o'clock somewhere. And joining me to sip and spill is our girl, Koya! Koya! Hey! Hi, beautiful. This is you. Hello. How are you? I am great. How are you? I am fantastic. Thank you so much for joining Thank you for always having me. Yeah, you know, it's a pleasure, and you know we're about to dive right on in. So you? much to talk about. Listen, Wednesday is my favorite day of the week because when all of the tea is being spilled, I can't wait to get here with my girl and talk all about okay, it. Okay, well, let's just get on <laughs> into this. So is it getting hot in here, or is it just essence stirring the pot? Mm. The outlet has social media users weighing in on the hottest male celebrities after revealing Damson Idris and Russell Wilson as their first two two men for sexiest man of the moment. So Koya, who's your pick? 
Ooh, this is hard out of these two. Ooh, I mean, see. honestly, I think I have to give it to Russell. Okay. Just because the love and admiration that he shows on social media to his wife. Yes. When I think of sexiest man of live, I think of just not physical appearance. I think about the things that they exude. You yes. know, all of it. Yes. So I think Russell is totally, yeah. You Russell know what? Has I it. agree with you on that. Mm -hmm. He just makes us feel like she got the lucky. Yes. She's the luckiest girl, right? Yes. Mm. Agreed. Okay, so let's move on to this next story. We're going to talk about Rihanna. So Rihanna is currently trending on social media after her images from Interview Magazine's photo shoot surfaced online. The Fenty founder is usually praised for her stunning photo shoots and magazine covers, but this time she might be facing some backlash. The folks are saying she is offending the Christian culture and that Christians need to boycott this. Oh! Yeah, I just don't... Speak on it. I guess I would love to know the thought process behind this look. Mm. Um, it's hard to believe that you are not making... Uh, I mean, you're making a mockery. I'm gonna call it what it is. Sorry, mm. Rihanna. I love you, girl, but I'm gonna be honest. I know. You're making, you're ahead. making a mockery of what Christianity is, in my opinion. Um, when you take something like this, um, that we all know and we hold nuns to very high regards yes. when it comes to religion, right? Yes. So if you take something like that and depict it in a different way, um, in a way that's derogatory, in my opinion, I feel as though I just need to know the thought process behind this. If it was not. In? If you gotta explain though, they say you already wrong, right? You're you right. Got a problem. You are right. So this is very interesting. Do you remember Lil Nas X came out looking like Jesus Christ on, on? So what's going on with the artist and the whole thing with Christianity? That's my whole thing. So and there's been a lot of conversation, especially recent mm. recently, surrounding a lot of this. So if you guys are not trying to make a mockery out of Christianity, what is it then? Because now it's giving very much. We're doing it in your face, and we're going to get away with it, and you're not going to do anything about it. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm getting out of that, too. Well, I guess we'll just have to wait a little while and see what she says. But as far as I'm concerned, what you see is what you get. Hello, and this ain't it. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. Ciao. So, whew, Lord have mercy, y'all done messed up Governor Ron DeSantis' order too many times. So, y'all, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has signed a new bill. With all the stuff we have going on in the state of Florida, he decided to sign a bill to crack down on food delivery <laughs> services. Y'all see what y'all done did? Y'all got the governor order wrong, and now there is a law. They are cracking down on the communication issues that customers frequently face when ordering food. Come on. Now, here's the thing. DoorDash and Uber. I am a very avid DoorDash and Uber Eats, you know, person who orders off of their site. However, to your point, with all of the issues that we have currently right now in Florida, I just don't know how we have any room to give attention to anything that's so minute, in my opinion. Like, all the issues that we have, Ron DeSantis, and you decide to go mess with Uber and DoorDash. Help me understand. I don't understand, but I mean, I am tired of Uber and DoorDash <laughs> messing up my order. I didn't know I needed to put a law in order, but at least now they will be held accountable by the governor. But let me ask you, on a scale... He must have had some real important guests that <laughs> night. Y'all done messed, y'all done made the governor mad. On a scale of importance, though, <laughs> where does this lie? I don't know, because we got all kind of stuff. I could talk about the rent is high here, mortgages are high here, yes. home insurance is high here, oh, car insurance is high here. Preach. Heck, even food is high in Florida. Hello? Can we just please? My God! So I would probably have felt better if he wanted to crack down on some of these fees they were charging yes. uh, versus the communication between the Come two. Come on now, you better get my order right. <laughs> no, I need you to lower my insurance. Right. Now I have to get another job. <laughs> that is All right, fact. let's move on to the next story. All right, here we go. So the decision whether to change last names after marriage is deeply personal and often laden with societal expectations and historical traditions. While legally, women now have the right to maintain their maiden names, cultural norms still heavily favored taking the husband's surname. So, Koya, what's your thoughts? Change or not change? You know, I am not a married woman. <laughs> so Go ahead probably... and say it again. Y'all, Koya's single. I am. Hello? <laughs> I am not a married woman. Um, so, and I've always thought about this, right, from a personality standpoint. When I did cho when I do cho choose to get married, 
am I gonna wanna change my last name? I mean, think about it, as people who are personalities, artists, performers, for so long you've gone by this thing. Yes. And just because there is um, a law maybe, or is there even a law, do you I don't know do if you there's a law to? that you have to. Yeah. But girl, when I decide to finally get married, if I get married, I'm taking that man's name. Yeah, okay, girl. You better come out. I know that's right. I ain't right. talking about no hyphen either. <laughs> I'm talking about, what's your last name, boo? I know that's Just right. Just knock it out. People gonna call me Sandra Lewis anyway. Mm -hmm. But if I'm going to, if. If he asked me to marry him, girl, I want the name, the ring, everything. I love Come it. Come on, give it all to me. I love that so much. <laughs> I just don't think, I don't know. I, again, it's easy for me to make that decision now that I'm a single woman. I think you'll have to go, you know, wait a little bit further down the line I to see how I that. feel when I'm yes. there. But I, I, I like my last name. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I feel you. I love you too, though, whoever you are, husband. But that's the thing. It's like, do men, that's another question, and that's another show. How do men feel about Ooh. women who don't take their last name? Now, I will tell you, I know a girlfriend of mine who had her name hyphenated, and after about 20 years of marriage, do you know her husband finally came forth and said, I really would appreciate it wow. if you wouldn't do that. And she changed it for him. If my husband were to come to me and say it would really mean a lot to me if you were to take my last name, a thousand percent. But if he was a person who was just like, girl, do what you want to do, I probably would keep mine. Really? Yeah, I mean, just for like my family's legacy and everything, I think so. Girl, <laughs> that's a beautiful thing, but I'm taking the name. Yeah, I know, that's right. <laughs> okay, so listen, let's move on to this next story. Oh, Lord have mercy. So Aoki, did I say that right? Yes. Aoki Lee Simmons and her 65-year-old lover boy, Vittorio Asaf, has split up. We just saw them. How did they split up already? That was quick. Yeah, um, I would venture to say it wasn't really much of a relationship to begin with. Um, I don't know if I'm talking too much and telling too much both. of the girl's secrets, but... Do you see they both have the same proportion in the back? You know what? I'm not doing this with you today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just not. speaking facts. I'm observing. I'm not going there with you today, okay? <laughs> but let me just that. say, in, in their tax bracket, this is a very common thing. It's called yachting, where young girls go and get older men to like sail across the... The, the ocean? The, the, across the world, the wherever you want to go. And, and the exchange is, I buy you everything you want if you go on these lavish vacations with me. Really? So that's a very common thing for people in their tax bracket, and it's called yachting. So when I saw them literally on a yachting, yacht. Yachting, like Y-A-C-H-T-I-N-G. Yachting. That is a verb, y'all. Yes. So when I that's saw, an action word. When I saw the two of them hanging out on the yacht, yachting, my <laughs> assumption was, okay, like she's a yacht girl. That's what they're called, yacht girl. No, stop. So that was my assumption. And I think possibly once the internet got a hold of it and they start like seeing pictures and paparazzi, I think she tried to dis like mask it with the he's my boyfriend, which is why it suddenly ended because he's probably was like, this is too much for me. The paparazzi, I'm on blogs. I run in restaurants because he owns a very reputable oh, restaurant change. So we went from sugar baby to yachting. Yeah, I'm, but here's the thing. It's a very common thing for people in their industry and tax bracket. I mean, some girls that ain't, or guys that aren't in the tax bracket, they get to go yachting anyway yeah. because they run into people in the Correct. tax bracket, right? So she reminds me very much of her mother. In what way? Because now you just took me somewhere else. <laughs> Elaborate on that a little bit. <laughs> well, she reminds me because Russell Simmons was much older than her mom. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And so maybe she's seen it, she's grown up around it, so it's not even a, a, a name or a title for her, it's just normal. Yeah, and let's not forget, she told her dad if he cut her off that she was gonna go and get a sugar daddy. The dad told her, you're not pretty enough pretty much to what? be a sugar daddy. So what did she do? Show the dad that she was pretty enough to get the sugar daddy. And maybe that now that she's shown her dad, it's like, okay, I proved you that yeah, I could do it. because every sugar daddy don't necessarily wants the proportion in the back. You know what, Sasandra? I'm just <laughs> saying, she's a, she's a pretty girl. That has nothing to do with it. She's stunning. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying, they have so much in common from the, from the view. More than we know. From the view we have, right, y'all? They got so much in common. So All right, much. let's move on. <laughs> Next, girl.
ooh, ooh, ooh. I don't know if we have time for this story. Okay. Let me just ask you what you're doing later. What's okay. up? What you got Listen, going on this week? you know week? this weekend my big event, Make Up Your Sexual Health, is going down at Rouge Beauty Lab. So I'm excited to see all of the Yay. girls more uh, advocating for HIV efforts, as you know. So, yeah, I'm excited about that. Love it. Love it. We'll have the best time. We can't wait to hear about it. To all of our viewers, thank y'all so much for tuning in. Koya, it's always a pleasure to have you. We love y'all. Until next time, God bless you. Come back and see us tomorrow. Hey, come on, y'all. Scan that QR code at the bottom of your screen.